Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Pastor Dr. Lawson Ngoa is the general overseer of Sunrise Banner Bible Church worldwide with international headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria. Pastor Dr. Lawson Ngoa is commissioned by God to provide the ministry of the Word of God and to disciple the whole world through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sunrise Banner Bible Church, we believe in God, we believe what God says. Verse 14, see Bible. In verse 14, but I trusted in thee. Even when they were coming, I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. Is God still alive? Talk to me. Is God still alive? Uh, you know, so many of you, you are very used to very cool services. <laughs> If we believe that God is still alive, can I say enough? God is alive. Your hope is coming back again. Come on, give me amen. Look at verse 19. He was emphasizing on trusting God. Look at verse 19. It says, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which has done what? Lay up for them that do what? Fear thee. Which thou hast wrought for them that do what again? Trust in thee before the sons of men. Before everybody you pass this month, this year, they will recognize that you have put your trust in God. Uh, oh, this congregation, I don't think, is this sunrise I'm talking to? Are you sure I'm talking to sunrise? I said everywhere you go this month, people will recognize that since you put your heart in God, God has never let you down. It will happen in the name of Jesus. And then he now came back again and did another summary. In the same chapter, he said, I trust you. And because I trust you, I know my enemies will not defeat me. Look at verse 8. In verse 8. I have not shut me up into the hands of the what? The enemies. That has set my feet in where? In, in a large room. He said, They tried to finish me. And this was the message he was passing to the Israelites. He said, Look, the first part of it telling us, Look, I put my trust in God. He never disappointed me. And then he says, He even put all the enemies, packed them on one side. And took me to a large room. Do you know you will not be renting house by the end of this year? Amen. Come on, my friend. You didn't give me anointing. Stand up and say amen. amen. You are not allowed to frustrate the hand of God on my life. So if I prophesy to you, you must take it. And say by the end of this year, you won't be renting house. We give you a large room in the name of Jesus. See Bible. In verse 13. In verse 13. It says, For I have heard the slander of many. So many of them, they tear me down. They say I'm nothing. I have heard the slander. Of many. How many says stories against us? But see that scripture. For I have heard the slander of many, fear was on every side. I don't even know where to go. My life looks like I am already on the bus stop. There are people in this kind of situation. 
He says, why they took cancer together against me? The device to take away my life. See verse 15. In verse 15. They thought they have done it. But look at verse 15. My time are in thy hand. <laughs> oh my God. He says, they thought they were in control of my time. But God proved to them that he is the one in control of my time. Stand up, let me pray for you. Every devil responsible for delay in your life, delay in your ministry, delay in your testimony, by the anointing of God in my life, I command that delay, banish in the name of Jesus. Let the enemy be crushed down. In the name of Jesus. Sit down. In verse 15. My time. Are in thy hand. Brother. Your time is in the hands of the Lord. In fact. He knows the time of today. You didn't get here by magic. You get here because it's, it's the appointed time. When the appointed time comes, it links you to where it wants you to be. You don't remove your time. God removes your time. Your time is in the hands of God. Your time is not in the hands of men. It came to a time in life when people thought that my time was in their hand. And God says, look, my friend, his time is not in your hand. His time is in my hand. When God marks, he marks it good. Oh my God. After today, you will realize that you are in another time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare today that you take everyone under the sound of my voice to another realm of time. Another realm of time. Another realm of time. In the name of Jesus. Sit down. Glory. See verse 18. In verse 18, let the lying lips be put to what? Silence. David say, I see all the lying lips against me. Put in silence. Any man who says that your destiny shouldn't happen, that man is lying. And today, they are in silence. Come on, give me amen there. I said they are in silence. In the name of Jesus. You have suffered for so long. You have been in that position for so long. And every wrong prophecy against your ministry. Because I'm called and I'm standing on this mantle, I declare you free in the name of Jesus. Verse 18. Let the line leaves be put to silent. We speak grievously things. Brownie. They say, without me, can he do anything? Without me, can he succeed? Let him go now. I will be here. He will come back and see me. It's a lie. Come on. I say, it's a lie. Away. They are not your God. You have a God. There is hope in your God. They thought David was going to return back a beggar. He returned back with promotion. They thought he was going to return back a slave to them. They thought he was going to return back a bone. Bear would have finished him. 
he returned back, they all bowed down for him. The man who thought that you come back begging, we come back begging you. If you're with me in the spirit, give me amen. Today is your day. I said, Today is your day. If you believe it, give me amen. Sit down. I'll do another few minutes and I'll pray with you. But can I tell you something? There is hope again. I see hope again. And so David now said, people of God, it happens to me and God did it. And so I have six things to advise you. Let me give you the six advice from David. Number one, act like men and be strengthened. David says, act like men and be strengthened. If you act like men, and you are strengthened, I will do a new thing in your life. Look at First Corinthians 16. Advice from David. First Corinthians 16. If you can run, I'll be very happy. Because I'll be very limited time. First Corinthians 16. Are you there? How many of you are there? Thank you. Now let's look at in verse 13. First Corinthians 16, verse what? Everybody? Talk to me. Talk to me. Verse what? 13. Now, let's look at verse 13. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Read the remaining one for me. Quit you like what? Like me. <laughs> David says, look, the only way to survive this world is to quit you like me. David would have said, now that you have thrown me to the forest, where am I going to see food to eat? When it comes to that situation, quit you like me. Lion was coming. They have never taught him how to fight with lion before. Quit you like me. Has rain has expired. You don't even know how you are going to pay. Quit you like me. It's looking at no school fees. And it's looking like you are now at the final point. Quit you like me. The strength of the Lord shall be your strength. Come on, stand up and give me an amen. This morning I release the heart of a man into your heart. Your heart shall be strong. You will take a viable decisions. Decisions that will change your story. It's happening right now in the name of Jesus. Sit down. His second advice is hate sin. Hate sin. He says, hey, sin. If you are a hater of sin, people will not like you. He says, but why people hate you? God will love you the more. Am I talking to you? And that is why he says in that text in Psalm 31, look at verse 6. Psalm 31 verse 6. He said, hate sin. You 
can be in this church and you love sin, you love fornication, love all manner of sin. If you love sin, you're not born again. If you love sin, you're not a child of God. You must hate sin. God hates sin. Everything around God is an hater of sin. You must hate sin. See verse 6. I have hated them that regard lies. I hate people that, know, that love sin. And because of that, they are fighting me. Why do you need to hate sin? You need to hate sin. One, because sin will degrade your life. Sin will degrade you. Sin will disgrace you. Sin can finish you. Sin is a cancer. You have no business with sin. See Bible. In Luke 12. Hate sin. You don't have any business with sin. See. Any man. Any woman trying to lure you into sin. That is your enemy. And if people will give you one trillion and they are committing sin, leave the one trillion and continue with righteousness. What did I say you should hate? Sin. Oh, sin. In Luke, in Luke chapter 12, help me Lord, Luke chapter 12, in verse 47 and verse 48, Luke 12, 47, 48. Are you there now? And the servants which knew his Lord will and prepare not himself, neither be it according as his will, shall do what? Be beaten with how many strife? Many strives. The servant who knew the Lord and went into sin. Bible says God will beat you with many stripes. That's why you don't need sin. Look at verse 48. But he that knoweth not. And did commit things worthy of strife. Shall be beaten with what kind of strife? Few stripes. That is the, that is the demarcation between us. Holiness preachers. And in Kenga preachers. In Kenga preachers, God will beat them with few strife. Because they claim they don't know. But you claim that you know. You already say you know about one man, one wife. You say you already know about dressing, Christian dressing. You say you already know about life for eternity. But this one is telling you he doesn't know. And so he's going to be receiving few strife. But you, when you commit sin, you receive many, many strives. And that is why today you're going to hate sin with your entire life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number three, sin defies. It defies. In Psalm 51, it defies. And so, if it defies, why do you need sin? Run away from sin. It will kill you. When you see sin, run away. Psalm 55 verse 2. Psalm 51 verse 2. Sorry, take Psalm 51 verse 2. Psalm 51 in verse 2. Are we there? Thank you very much. In verse 2, watch me thoroughly from my what? Iniquities. And cleanse me from my sins. In verse 7, purge me with thy hyssop and I shall be what? Clean. Watch me and I shall be what? Whiter than slow. God will do it for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. See Psalm 19, verse 12. 
Psalm 19, verse 12. Sing. Sing. David says, the only secret I had is that in the midst of all, I was righteous. That's my secret. And it says, just hate sin. So I was a hater of sin. Hate sin. See, chapter 19, in verse 12, who can understand his error? Look up here. Until somebody tells you that what you are doing is wrong. You are yet to arrive. The day you are growing in ministry or anything you are doing and people cannot tell you where you are wrong, then you are bound to die. You should have somebody who said, this thing you are doing, please, is wrong. Because who can understand his error? There are times even what you think you are doing that is right is even an error. I spoke on our last Bible study and I said something on that Bible study. Apostle Paul said, let everyone call upon the name of the Lord. But today, there could be things you call upon that you think that can help you. It's an error. And every error is a sin. God will deliver you from error. Amen. My friend, give me amen. amen. It doesn't matter who commits the error. Error is an error. An error, we always, you can imagine, error will always zero you. You can't be in error and succeed. There is no magic, no deliverance. Error is the worst demonic that can possess any man. I am telling you the truth. If you are in the right source, you can get it right and you will go right. Today, sin banished in Jesus' name. 1912, who can understand his error? Cleanse thou me from what? All the secret sin. What did you do in your bedroom when nobody's there? What kind of films are you watching? Some of you now, you are naked. You are showing your nakedness to, you call it husband to be or something. If they just see my body now, don't you know, are you not hungry of this? You know what you do, you know it. You know how you satisfy yourself. And you say, you are not and you know, I know they commit immorality, but you know you commit it every morning. You know it. You know the kind of thing you do. You know it. You know what you are doing with social media. You know it. Stop sin. Hate sin. So that your hope can be renewed again. If you are with me, give me amen. amen. Oh my God. Are you have you retired? You know, in a church where once you preach sin, people became dead. You don't like us to talk about sin. <laughs> Give me another amen. <laughs> God will forgive you sin. God will cleanse your sin away. But you need him to clean your sin away. And you'll be pure and cleansed in Jesus' name. Because of my time, I may not finish the sixth advice. I may do four, three, whatever number. When once I hit, when I need to pray, I will have to start praying. Would that be okay? Would that be okay? So let's take number three. No, the other ones was under sin. The other ones was under where? I'm the preacher. Now you're not the preacher. Are you going to preach for me? What does the preacher say? Number what? The preacher say number what? Hey, so write number three. That's what the preacher said. Do we have two preachers here? Who is the preacher? Are you sure? If I'm the preacher, what name did you call me? Eh? eh you interpret it yourself. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. So now, let's look at it. 
Number three, take courage at all times. Proverbs 31, Proverbs 31, verse 24. David says, I took courage at all times. Even when I thought no courage again, I took courage at all times. Brother, take courage at all times. In Proverbs 31, Verse 24. She make it find what? And do what? And do what? If women cannot even read this one, then there is challenge here. Because this one is their own scripture. They will never do any message without this one. Okay, so I take it again. She make it fine. Nine. Hold on for a while. For her to sit down and make something. You can't make things that is existing. And it can only take courage to make something out of nothing. So, when it looks like life is ended, that is what we see in the life of David. He got into the forest. Life ended. He makes a house out of nothing. He makes a name out of nothing. He makes a history out of nothing. You will make history out of nothing in Jesus name. And so be courageous at how many time? All time. Number four. Wait and trust in the Lord. Wait and trust in the Lord. In Psalm 27, verse 14, write it down. Wait and trust in God. Have you written it down? Write the second one, Psalm 62, 1 and 5. You will read it at home because of my time. Number 5. Number 5. Hope, you shall not be forgotten. I thought you would have said amen to that one. David says, hope, you will never be forgotten. God did not forget me, he will not forget you. Look at Psalm, Psalm 9. Run, run, run. Psalm 9. Run now. Psalm 9, if I take this place, I may end here. Psalm 9 verse 18. In Psalm 9 verse 18. Psalm 9 verse 18. Are you there now? Please open your Bible. Please, I beg of you. Are you there? Alright. In verse what? For the needy shall not always be what? How many person here need God to renew his hope today? The needy shall not always be what? Forgotten. See that scripture. The expectation of the poor shall not do what? Perish forever. So God is going to remember somebody today. I said God is going to remember somebody today. In, look at verse 12. Take verse 12. Chapter 9 verse 12. In verse 12. When he maketh what? Acquisitions for blood. He remembered them. He forgot not the cry of which people? The humble. As you cry to the Lord today, He will never forget you in Jesus' name. I take this scripture as the last scripture now. In Proverbs, leave the rest. We'll take it next time. In Proverbs 23, Proverbs 23, the Lord will not forget you. The Lord will remember you. Your hope will be remembered. 
your thinking will be remembered. This month, the Lord shall remember you in the name of Jesus. Look at in Proverbs 23, verse 18. 23, verse 18. For surely there is an end. There is an end to that trouble. What kind of people is this? I say, surely there is what? Will there be in to that wahala? <laughs> How many of you believe that there will be end today? There will be end to that wahala. There will be end to that pain. There will be end to that sickness. There will be end to that hopelessness. In the name of Jesus. Let me just finish that scripture and I will pray there now. For surely there is an end. And my expectation shall not be cut off. Thank God, David says, my expectation. How many body have expectation here? Can you stand to your feet? We have expectation. And you want God to do something with your expectation? Can you stand to your feet right now? We want to pray. I'd like you to just stretch forth your hand and worship God first. And bless him. Just worship him first. Convena keeping God. There is no one like you ah follow me there is no one like you everybody now come keeping God there is no one like you alpha and omega there is no one. Everybody sing it now. Come, Vena. Keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha, no mega. There is no one like you. Go as a covenant with David. His father was not there. His mother was not there. They thought that he was a common man. They never knew he had a covenant with God. God stood by his own covenant. You are going to pray today and say, Father, you will not cut me off. My hope renew it again. Open your mouth and pray. I don't know why you are not praying. Thank God for some of you. You are praying. Some are not praying. A very few minutes. Remember me, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. All is close. David says, hate sin. You know you are in this hall. You are a sinner. You've committed sin. You know. God wants to do wonders in the life of his people today. Put up your hands. Ask God for forgiveness. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't look at Taito. Taito will only deceive you. Let God cleanse that sin away. Let God make you righteous again. Let God make you holy again. The only secret is holiness. 
Father, I want to thank you for these ones. Bless you for these ones. Thank you for a new life. Thank you for a new deliverance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for forgiveness. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Give me a loudest amen. I know I'm going to see some of you. So I've surrendered those sins today. Never go back to them. Just live a righteous life. And you shall be holy. And God will remember you. Give me a great, great amen. David says, surely there is an end. Every righteous believers in this house, you will agonize now. You, you know the thing that troubles you. Apostle Paul said, Henceforth, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the mark of Christ. I want you to make a declaration and stop an end. Make an end to this trouble. An end to hopelessness. An end to trouble in life. Open your mouth and pray. Come on, come on, come on, pray, come on, pray. Songs of Psalms. Psalms of hope. Speak hope. And place a stop to every demonic activities. I go of Satan. Place a stop to it. Jesus name we pray when I look at the way you are praying you are not praying like somebody who made what you are saying I want you to pray we have just two points of prayer left you are going to pray and say father remember me on the days my enemy forgot me so oh my god <laughs> When they have all forgotten David and say he was no longer existing. That was the day the Lord remembered him. Remember me the day I'm abandoned. Remember me the day I look forgotten. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Pray like you're serious. Pray like you're serious. We are people of God here. Jesus may we pray give me a loudest amen the last 
point of prayer. Every other person that has gone through that forest did not know that there was a lion and a bear in that forest. A man with destiny. That is the man lion can locate. Lion does not look for people that didn't carry lion. Lion looks for men with lion. Hey! <laughs> That's what David says. Be of good courage. For there is a lion of the tribe of Judah. Right inside of you. Put up your right hand. Say this after me. My father, my father. Every lion after me. May the lion inside me. Consume you now. Consume you now. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray the prayer. <laughs> every lion in my marriage every lion in my business every lion in my ministry every lion in my life let the lion in me He said, "The bow and a particular time, he abased it all." you I carry the lion of the tribe of Judah be swallowed up Come on. Come on. Do that prayer better. Do that prayer better. Do it better. The sister far, far back there. You're not praying. I'm seeing you. size deceive them let not my size deceive them I carry the lion of the tribe of Judah every lion stained by the devil after my life you are dead there is hope
pray like a man with hope again. Thank God for those of you praying. Jesus name we pray give me a loudest amen. amen the Lord just told me I should do this one more and I've told the church that this one was going to be the last please church the Lord just says one more we will take it we won't disobey God we are going to take it God says see how I embarrass the elder brothers of David. Same way I'm going to embarrass their enemies. Same way I'm going to embarrass your enemies. Put up your hands. Any man, any woman after me who have said my name is written off, who have said I am no longer alive, who have said I'm no longer existing, my God is going to embarrass them. I'm going to appear before them again. I am appearing again. I'm appearing again. I'm appearing again. I'm appearing again. Pray! There is life in your calling again. There is life in your family again. There is life in your ministry again. God is taking you from the forest. Your ministry is coming back to the city. Hey! God brought him back. Go announced him. Go announced him. Go brought him back. You are coming 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 back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus. Name, we pray. I take this song and I make a declaration on your life. Lift up your hands. Come, Venna. Keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha, no mega. There is no one. Sing it and see God. Convener, keeping God. There is no one like you. I follow me. There is no one. Before me and beside me. There is no one like you. How far, hello, Omega. There is no one like you. 
Hallelujah. Governor, keep it going. There is no one like you. How far you make There is no one. It is well. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. <laughs> it is well with my soul. Everybody now, it is well. It is well with my soul. This month, it is well. This year, with my soul. Everybody now, it is well. It is well with my soul. <laughs> I never see anyone like you. 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 <laughs> I never see anyone like you. 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 I never see. Anyone like you. I never see anyone like I never see, I never see anyone like you. I never see, I never see anyone like you. I never see, I never see anyone like you. I never see, I never see anyone like you. I never see, I never see anyone like you. I never see, I never see anyone like you. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Father, that is the truth. If you remove God, who should be David? Couldn't even mention the name of his mother.
every works of the devil that has taken away hope from you make you feel that your life has ended you devil I rebuke you get out in the name of Jesus there is hope again in the morning there is hope again in the afternoon there is hope again in the night there is hope again throughout this month this year there is hope again in the name of Jesus by the anointing upon this boat a place and end to your hopelessness Come on, open your mouth and say resounding amen. A place and end to death in your life. Say amen to it. A place and end to borrowing. Borrowing stop from today. You will be a lender. You'll be a giver. In the name of Jesus. The place and end to failure in your generation. To failure in your business life. To failure in your ministerial life. To failure everywhere you step your leg to you will be remembered again. Your enemies shall be ashamed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Give me a resounding amen. If there is anything that is so difficult today, if there is anything people fought today, if there is anything people are not willing to do today, if there is anything you want to fight with people in the church today, it's very simple doing the will of God. And if there is anything that has made me stupid and make me foolish and make me so humble, and make me so focused is the will of God. If there is anything you cannot argue with, and if there is anything you cannot debate with, if there is anything you won't see in the dictionary, if there is anything no teacher, no lecturer will lecture you in the university, is the will of God. If there is anything Satan is interested in, and if there is anything Satan will not want you to do, is the will of God. If there is anything that will cost you sacrifice, if there is anything you need to make a vow to do, that is the will of God. Any day you play with the will of God, that day you play with your entire life. That day you play with your entire destiny. If there is anything that can make a way for you in life and make you excel academically, mentally, physically, and otherwise, that is the will of God. I'm here to do the will of God. Number one, obey the will of God. It may cost you your life. Obey the will of God. Number two, do the will of God. You don't just obey it, but you do it. You do it. Number three, that is the will of God. Practice it. So you, you, you take it on a daily basis. You're only practicing it. Number four, die for the will of God. You can die for it. There is nothing again in this world that if that what dying for 
than the will of God. Then number four, locate the will of God. You need to locate it. You need to look for it. There are people that are not ready to look for the will of God. That's to say that if you need to make impact in life, and you need to make adequate impact in your profession, and you need to make adequate impact in ministry, then you need to have an insight. The insight of the will of God. What is God saying about you? What is the mind of God about you? What is the plan of God about you? What is the direction of God about you? It's not the direction of the why or the direction of your mother or the direction of economy. It's the direction of the will of God. What is God saying? What does God we want have you do? I've never regretted obeying the will of God. Anytime God says, this is what you need to do. It may offend a man. Man and God, who is the greatest. Can I hear you? That may step on people's toes. Until you are ready to take up the will of God. And the will of God becomes supreme in your life. Fasting and prayer will do nothing for you. Will of God is the pathway to success. Be on the right road and you will get to your destination on time. There is no disobedience with God that does not come with a price. If you disobey the will of God, you must pay a price. That's why I see people today. Cry, Pastor. Can you pray for me? God can hear the prayer of Pastor. But who knows whether you are passing through pains of your disobedience? My prayer today is that all of us we will be willing to obey the will of God. See, everything will expire. The will of God will not expire. Don't argue with the will of God. Do not argue with the will of God. Just 